Hi there. It looks like we've got quite a few people joining us. Thank you for uh, spending some time today with NSBA and our good friends over at uh, the import, uh, the Export Import Bank of the U.S. Um, we're looking forward to a great conversation today, and I think we've got some really good information to share with you. Uh, we're going to talk about how the government can help you overcome some of the major issues you face to exporting and how to grow your international sales. XM is an independent federal agency that promotes and supports American jobs by providing competitive and necessary export credit to support the sales of U.S. goods and services to international buyers. We'll also be discussing uh, new research on how small businesses are doing, uh, how they're doing global business in today's world. First, you're going to be hearing from Jennifer Krauss, who is the Managing Director for Broker Accounts at XM. Jennifer has over 20 years of experience in credit insurance, tax and financial statement preparation, commercial insurance financing, and finance management. Prior to joining XM Bank directly, Jennifer held positions as a private broker for XM Bank for 14 years, as well as finance positions at SunTrust Bank and Top Services. Next, you'll hear from Phil Jeske and David Eichert from Air Tractor. Phil spent 20 years as a banker at, and in 2004 took the position of finance manager at Air Tractor Inc. to manage and grow their export finance program. Their program has grown to originate 40 to 50 XM medium term transactions annually, and their export finance program has grown to support over 25% of the company's annual sales. Sorry about that. My screen is doing something kind of wonky. I apologize. Um, next up, we're going to hear from David Eichert. And David is actually a past chair of the National Small Business Association. And when he was with, um, he's currently retired, but anybody who knows David that um, uh, he's, he's still doing, got a lot of fires in the, uh, uh, a lot of irons in the fire. Um, he was with uh, Air Tractor for, I think, 1989 to uh, 2022. Uh, he ran their finance department uh, and uh, kind of kicked started the whole export program and they've done really amazing things and David and Phil are going to talk to you about some of the uh, phenomenal work that Air Tractor has done um, with the support of XM. Uh, finally you'll hear from Todd McCracken the president and CEO of NSBA and he's going to be talking about some new research that we just um, finalized and we'll be releasing shortly uh, talking about how many small businesses are exporting, uh, where they're exporting to, what their biggest challenges are. I think it's going to be some very good information. So um, uh, just a couple of ground rules. We do have everybody muted. We're expecting um, well over uh, 150 people on the line. Uh, so we will keep you muted. If you do have questions, you can uh, put those in the chat. So with that, we do ask you to keep the chat relatively clear and uh, reserve it for questions so we can best see what those questions are. Uh, we will have time for Q&A at the end. And uh, if you have any uh, breaking urgent questions, you can either chat me directly or you can shoot a quick email to mday at nsba.biz. And with that, uh, Jennifer, I will turn it over to you. Great, thank you, Molly. Thanks for the introduction and thank you NSBA for hosting this uh, awesome export event. I'm gonna kick it right off uh, so we have plenty of time for your questions uh, by sharing a little bit about uh, some of the programs that are uh, most utilized at XM Bank. Um, XM, the Export Import Bank of the United States uh, is what that stands for, but um, affectionately referred to as XM for short. I'm just gonna get to my slides here. Um, that's a little bit about who we are. Uh, XM is a, is a U.S. federal agency, technically, um, headquartered in Washington, D.C., uh, and we're about 500 uh, in staff, and uh, it, all over our website and, and uh, in the news, you'll see a lot of what we do is all to support U.S. jobs, American jobs, uh, through helping companies with their export business, um, so goods and services. We do help service companies as well, so we always want to make mention of that. Um, we uh, do have uh, some services that are also uh, offered in the private sector. So the same things that XM is doing uh, some of the time are offered in the private sector. So I just want to mention that we do complement what the private sector does and not replace um, anything that they're offering. Um, there are certain instances where the private sector isn't able uh, to offer insurance or financing and, that, and that's really where XM wants to come in and help companies bridge that gap. Um, we do um, plenty of due diligence on the transactions that we're involved in. So uh, we call it a reasonable, reasonable assurance of repayment. So I uh, want to make sure that folks know that we're um, uh, underwriting these transactions with a, a fine tooth comb um, and that we maintain a pretty low default rate um, on this portfolio. So uh, we are helping companies make uh, credit decisions uh, and of course, watching our, our own. Um, I 
definitely need to mention that XM is small business focused because I know a lot of what's in the news is about XM's large business. Uh, so assistance for large projects, infrastructure projects, large companies and so forth. But in fact, over 90% of the individual transactions that XM uh, looks at are for US small businesses. Uh, so we're very small business focused. I'm actually in the small business division. It's a whole division of itself. Um, so no company in and of itself or no transaction that you may have is too small. Uh, I have heard a number of folks say, oh, you know, my business isn't large enough to work with XM. Uh, so maybe a little bit of a myth out there that we can um, do away with. So we have helped transactions that are just a few hundred dollars, a few thousand dollars on a daily basis. Jennifer, I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm getting a little bit of feedback. I'm going to, I'm going to mute everyone. Um, and then you may just have to unmute yourself. Excellent. Thanks for that. Yep. Much better. Thank you. So. I'll jump right into one of the most utilized products uh, by the number of transactions that we do, the, the most utilized is something called export credit insurance. Uh, you may have re heard it referred to as accounts receivable insurance or trade credit insurance has a lot of different names. Um, but essentially what it is, is where an exporter is going to um, negotiate contract terms with a customer overseas, you know, the purchase order uh, terms, and those end up being on credit. So net 30, net 60, 180 days uh, for that foreign customer to pay the U.S. supplier. And what export credit insurance does is say, okay, if you go ahead and ship that product or provide that service, and in fact, the foreign customer doesn't pay on those terms that they promised initially, that the insurance would come in, step in and pay. Um, so that that's probably the most utilized product that we get uh, inquiries for uh, quite a few times a day. Um, so some folks may be using that to protect against commercial and, and political risks of doing business in other countries. So purely from a risk standpoint of doing business in other countries. And I'll go over some of those risks that, that we identify uh, most commonly. Um, some exporters may be using it as a sales tool um, so to say, hey, you know, otherwise I wouldn't have done that contract in Brazil. Uh, but now that I have insurance kind of backing me and giving me a little bit more comfort, I'm willing to take on some new countries that I've never sold to before or some customers that I don't know very well and haven't known for many years, um, or to give longer terms uh, to your customers overseas. Maybe you've been stuck on 30, 45, 60 day payment terms, but really what would help them in today's market is 90 day terms. And that's a little bit out of your comfort zone. Uh, so some folks use the export credit insurance to make them um, enable them to be able to offer competitive terms. And then some folks use it as financing tool with their lender. Uh, so here in the US, if, if you have experience going to your bank and saying, I'd really like a line of credit to grow my export business, a lot of times um, the banks here in the US, the commercial banks and non-banks um, would like you to have some sort of collateral on that inventory that's shifting out of the country because um, now the bank doesn't have that as a, as a backstop. And some people, some exporters that we work with use it, use this insurance for all three of these reasons. Uh, so might as well make it the most useful that you could. Um, policies can cover a single transaction. They can cover a single customer. Uh, they can cover multiple customers um, or an entire portfolio that, a, that an exporter has for international uh, sales. And just here are some of those risks that I mentioned I would cover, political and commercial risks of doing business in other countries that we see. There's certainly more coverage than this I, I want to mention, but these are some of the top reasons that we may see a foreign buyer not pay their bills, uh, is that they went insolvent or bankrupt or the equivalent of such in uh, another country. Um, commercial uh, third bullet point there, protracted default, that's just a fancy way of saying that the foreign customer is slow paying. Uh, they haven't gone out of business. Uh, but they are really past due on an invoice. Um, that is a reason for claim filing. Uh, that's pretty common. And then on the political side, uh, war or hostilities in a region, unfortunately, causing a U.S. supplier to not get paid uh, currency transfer risk, because we understand you're probably invoicing your foreign customers in U.S. dollars, and they have to go to their central bank uh, there to get um, U.S. dollars, convert their own currency into U.S. dollars. So sometimes there's a risk in doing that, that uh, and, makes them unable to pay in US dollars at that time. Cancellation of an import or export license could also come in, into play. Um, the only thing that the insurance doesn't um, address, and this is the case for us on the government side, and, and then of course the private carriers are disputes between uh, US exporters and their foreign buyers. And what we mean by that is just that um, maybe there's a quality issue with the product um, that's delaying their payment. Uh, we tend to not get in the middle of those and, and neither do the private carriers. So I just wanna make mention of that. 
on our website and these links will work so if you receive a copy of the slides you'll be able to to link to these pages on our website but the, there's a guide called a country limitation schedule and it's an alphabetical listing of countries it shows all the countries in the world where xm is providing services such as this export credit insurance and right now if you go there there's um, over 180 countries that are eligible for you to apply for insurance in so if you're selling to one of those 180 plus countries uh, these services are available through XM. And uh, once you, uh, the alphabetical listing of country countries comes up, you click on the country, it'll, it'll have a simple yes or no. So it's pretty easy to read. Um, it just breaks it down and whether you're selling to a government entity in the other country or where, whether you're selling to a private entity. So that could vary country by country. And then also on our website uh, is a large format of this document, which shows you when you are interested in looking at invoice coverage on a particular international customer or transaction. Uh, we're very transparent about what documents we look at from, that are provided by the US exporter. So uh, if the US exporter has a $100,000 transaction, the, the document would clearly state you know, what sort of documents our underwriting department looks at to make a credit decision. Um, so we're, we're very upfront about that. We don't contact foreign customers. Um, or documents, we actually uh, receive those documents through the US exporter. Uh, so this outlines which documents our underwriting department would need to be able to qualify a foreign customer uh, for invoice protection. And I put just some bullet points here, just some examples. You know, we do look that the foreign entity's been in business for at least three years, so it couldn't be a startup company overseas, for example. Um, and then a lot of times we'll receive a reference from another company that's already giving them terms, giving them credit and see how that's been going uh, to be able to give a, a new US exporter uh, an insurance guarantee. So there's just some examples. I mentioned before that the coverage comes in different formats, and one is just buying coverage on one international customer. Uh, there's plenty of times that a U.S. exporter has been selling to the same 10 customers for 20 years, and they're very comfortable with that, and they have a new potential customer um, come up, and they, they don't want to walk away from the business, but they really would like the extra um, comfort of, of having this insurance. So Certainly, uh, exporters come in and apply to XM for just single buyer coverage. It's one off coverage for a particular customer. And um, I just want to give you some real live examples of what that looks like. This is 90% um, coverage uh, for that kind of insurance policy. Um, the, the policies don't carry insurance deductible, so it's just that 10% co-insurance, we call it. Um, and then the rates are listed on that link right there uh, by country. And once you do pull up the country, it gives you the appropriate cost for that country. Um, so the rates are uh, provided before you even apply for insurance. Um, you know, you would know what the cost of the insurance is. Um, that's handy if you're negotiating a purchase order with, with a customer, you can build in this insurance cost, you know, sort of like a financing cost to be providing them credit of 60 days, 90 days, for example. Um, so you know up front what the insurance cost would be. And then we have the um, portfolio structure of policies. So as you can see, we have several different kinds of those, uh, depending on the size exporter and the size business, uh, export business that the exporter has, uh, we have several solutions uh, that are uh, portfolio based. And that coverage is, is increased a bit here. You'll see it's, it's actually 95% coverage of your invoiced amount. Um, so that 90 and 95% coverage is, is actually covering an exporter's invoiced amount, including their markup, including their shipping costs. Um, so it's it's pretty hefty coverage there, five or 10% risk only to be doing business in another country's um, pretty good incentive to expand more internationally. And then briefly how the export credit insurance works. Um, I know we're a government agency, some people think it might be an involved process, but it's actually pretty easy. Uh, uh, choosing one of those insurance options and, and filling out the application. And we have uh, folks that can, can um, counsel companies on the best solution for them and, and get them the appropriate application and even help with that form. Once it's submitted to our um, underwriting departments, really just a two to 10 day turnaround for the approval process is quite quick. At that point, the exporter would know that they have insurance for the transaction, maybe that's at hand right, right away, and they could offer credit um, to that customer um, for that product sale of, of products or services. 
and then at that point, the um, purchase order would state those payment terms, you know, net 60 or net 90, let's say, um, for the sale of something to Australia. And the buyer accepts and signs off on that purchase order. And then the exporter um, ships the product or provides the service. And step five, they would go ahead and report to XM that that uh, export happened. Um, and that's when that's the one and only time when they are notifying us that the shipment happened and paying to insure the shipment. So up to this point, there's been no cost to apply for insurance, to apply to have XM look at a transaction or look at an international customer and, and offer a credit opinion and, and give an insurance uh, approval. And at that point, the US exporter has enacted the insurance, so, so then they pay to, to use the insurance at that point. Um, and then either the, the foreign buyer pays and um, you go on to the next transaction, or if they don't pay, you would just simply go back into that, that same system. Um, same system. system. Getting, system. getting some system. feedback. So Molly, do you want to mute all of one more time? Here we go. Okay, so then the uh, foreign buyer would either pay or um, they don't pay and you go back into that online system and let us know that they did it. Um, there's a there's a claim filing window of when U.S. exporters can can make a payment a claim uh, request. Excuse me with XM. Um, so it's usually 90 days after the uh, for example. I'm going to mute everybody again. Sorry about that. Thank you. Thank you. So that's a little bit about the process. Again, there's folks that can uh, handhold U.S. exporters through this uh, process at XM and um, through our private insurance brokers. Eligibility. I want to mention a little bit about. Uh, the U.S. exporters uh, eligibility requirements to access the programs. Um, so if you're an exporter or know of an exporter that's been in business for at least a year, um, we usually like that they have some exporting experience. We do have one program offering where for newer to export um, companies and then uh, that you have a, a DMB DUNS number um, and financial statement or tax returns for the last fiscal year. And if you don't have a DUNS number, we've put a little link there about how to get one. Uh, and then if that the products that you're selling are at least 50% US content, um, including your labor and your, your overhead, but not your markup. Um, and then if you're a service entity that the services are being provided by US domiciled employees, and that would qualify as US content. Um, that you have no military or defense related products that you're selling, or you're not selling to any military or security agencies. That's one little restriction that XM has. Uh, there's a couple of exceptions to that. If it's for humanitarian reasons, for example, um, then or border protection, or there's a couple of others, uh, we can consider exceptions. Again, you're selling to one of those countries that XM's approved to, to offer services in, so about 185 of those right now. And then that your products are shipping from the United States if, you have a, if you're a product-based business. Uh, we we uh, don't work with products that are drop shipped from, from other uh, locations, for example. And a very exciting development that we've had come about, this is less than a year old, is uh, you may or may not be familiar that uh, several states in the US, um, the ones that are in blue here, have been awarded with a step grant money. This in involves um, the Small Business Administration's uh, funds for, for export growth. And then some of, the, some of the states here involved that have received those funds have matching funds. And, and what happens there is, is it enables the states to work with companies who are looking to expand internationally. You're looking to go to trade shows. You want to change your website into uh, some other languages. You want to put your pamphlets and brochures into additional languages. Um, or you're using XM for export credit insurance uh, invoice protection. And that's also an eligible expense now. Um, so these states that are highlighted in blue, um, we have this state step administrator link at the bottom where you can click here and see for your state where you may be located, who is your administrator to apply for such grant funds. Um, and it's a pretty simple application. I've seen several of them. They're not, not more than a couple of pages or a few pages. Um, so that when you're using XM insurance or you want to go to that trade show, we highly encourage you to reach out to your state step administrator, grant administrator, uh, to see if you are eligible for reimbursement for some of these uh, export expenses. Um, so we're very happy and pleased that SBA has included XM in this uh, premium reimbursement program. And then um, switching gears to one of our other uh, utilized programs here at XM is the Working Capital Guarantee Program. So some folks uh, you utilize this uh, when you're working with a commercial lender. 
uh, and the commercial lender says, you know, I, I need the collateral to back up this loan. I don't want to just do an export loan uh, without any, any um, sort of backstop. So SBA and XM has a working capital guarantee program. Um, so you'll see here some of the uh, items in the middle that are what these funds could be used for. So you're still working with your lender. It's not a direct loan or, or a line of credit from XM. Uh, we're just working with your lender. Um, so actually on our website, we have a list of approved lenders and, and you'll probably see uh, your, your bank on there and the bank contact who's familiar with this uh, collateralization. And so a manufacturer, wholesaler, distributor, you'll see at the bottom here, eligibility, uh, whether you're an, a direct exporter or in fact, this program works with indirect exporters. So if you're selling to somebody that is then exporting, you're also eligible for working capital guarantee program, which is kind of neat. Um, the insurance doesn't work that way, but the, the financing does. Um, so if you're interested in um, working through your commercial lender to obtain export financing um, to use in any of these categories, uh, then we would also recommend that you um, try to get to the, the right person at your bank that uh, is familiar with this program. And we have that list of contacts on our website. It's called a lender locator. And then I'd like to just uh, quickly mention some other government resources. These are our two closest federal partners that we work with on a regular basis. The three agencies of us together um, are often working with the same exporting entities. So if you haven't accessed these services, you might consider uh, the Department, U.S. Department of Commerce. Um, so um, it's a, the international division, essentially, of, of commerce. Uh, they do uh, gold key uh, that they call gold key promotion, we call it matchmaking, um, is, is hooking you up with, with potential new customers in other countries that have been pre-vetted. Uh, so if you are looking to expand your, your uh, export buying portfolio, uh, you may consider a new country that you've never sold to before, et cetera. Uh, we have embassies, as you know, in a little over 80 countries where commercial um, attaches sit and, and are available to uh, you know, potentially work with you and your industry and in, in helping you find the right customers in country because they're they're actually um, sitting in those countries. So th that's a pretty effective service from the Department of Commerce that I want to mention. And then, of course, the SBA, I was um, talking a little bit about their step program uh, for grant reimbursement, and they also do uh, lines of credit and loans for, you know, uh, equipment and building and land purchases, uh, whereas our working capital program does not address that. Uh, SBA may be able to work with you on some of those types of capital purchases. This is XM's regional presence. Um, of course, we're headquartered in DC, which isn't marked on there, but just want to let you know that um, we're probably in your backyard. Hopefully, uh, we have uh, physical folks that sit in these offices. And if you'd like to reach out to them or are interested, uh, we have put a consultation um, request link within this slide. And I think it will be part of um, maybe uh, what you receive uh, as being an attendee here. So I'll, I'll stick around for questions, certainly, uh, but just want to let you know um, that usually it would be somebody uh, close to you that would that would work with you. And hopefully um, if you if you're even, you know, think you're slightly uh, qualified for for some of these programs, you'll reach out to us. We want to we want to talk to you and, and make sure, you know, um, that we reach out to everybody that uh, that is eligible. Thank you, Molly. I pass it back to you. Thank you very much, Jennifer. It's, it's really amazing everything that XM does. Um, and, and to your point about reaching out to you know different professionals within XM, we do have a poll built in that we're gonna we're gonna pop up toward the end of the uh, session. And if you want somebody from XM to reach out to you and contact you, just click yes, and then we'll have your information, and they will reach out to you. So, um, but that we'll do that after we hear from uh, Phil, David, and Todd. So with that, I would like it to, to I would like to turn it over to um, uh, Phil and David to tell us about their experience with XM. Oh, you know what? Let me get you unmuted. We're having some issues. And Jennifer, if you want to stop your screen share, that would be great. Okay. Uh, everybody hear me okay? My name is David Ockert. Uh, as Molly mentioned, I was the CFO for Air Tractor for 31 years. I have retired now, but still doing some part-time work. I'm going to cover this from a broad overview perspective. And then Phil Jeske, who's uh, got great knowledge in, in all of this, as far as our tractor is concerned, uh, utilization of XM, we'll, we'll get into some more topics. So I'm going to hit it just from 
a broad view for, for a moment, and then we'll, we'll transition to field for some specifics. Air tractor manufactures ag planes, crop dusters, if you will. And uh, we are now selling basically all over the world. We are a small business located in a small rural town. So if there's anything that I could get across to people considering exporting, you're never too small. You don't have to be in a big city. You can do it. If we can do it, you can do it. And I'm going to start my remarks with basically, basically the conclusion I have about XM, and then we'll back up and hit a few other points. In my opinion, XM is one of the best, if not the best, U.S. government programs that's available out there today. It's also, in my opinion, one of the most underutilized, especially when you compare how other countries use their export credit agencies. So it's a great tool. Jennifer covered many of the aspects that are out there uh, that, they, that you can use. So uh, dig into it. If you have the slight interest in, in exporting and doing international sales, you, you must engage with XM. Um, as, as the uh, metrics go, 95% of the world's population lives outside of the United States. So why would you want to limit your market to, to just 5%? Uh, let's, let's go for the total market. And that's where XM comes into play. I'm going to talk just briefly about Air Tractor's experience. We are selling a capital asset. So we have used the medium term credit insurance for the most part. Phil's now got uh, using some of the medium term guarantees. But uh, our product is in the five to seven year financing range. And uh, Quite frankly, if it wasn't for XM, we could not sell these planes unless there's cash. And a lot of times on capital equipment, they don't have enough cash. So it is, um, it's, it's the absolute best way that we could engage. And it's just, it's, it's been proven to be a, a one of a kind program as far as we're concerned. To give you some examples of what XM has done for us, um, in 1994, my boss came to me and said, you need to go out and look for international financing. We need to get past the U.S. borders. I'd not done that before. It was brand new. So it was a lot of uh, fits and starts, but we, we made it. But in 1994, we did 10% of our total sales outside of the United States. And we had about 100 employees. Today, Phil and his group are doing north of 60% of their sales outside of the United States. So you can see the, the growth from 10% to north of 60%. And our employee base has moved from 100 people to over 300 people. And a lot of that is attributable to international sales. International sales is where the growth of air tractor is in many companies. And again, it could not happen without uh, XM. As Jennifer also mentioned, this is not a giveaway program. XM expect, expects to get to be paid back. So, uh, it, it, it's a process and you've got to understand the process and get involved. It's not an impossible process, but it is somewhat complex. And I would contend that it's a long-term process. Uh, Air Tractor has been committed to this, as I've said, since 1994, and we grow and learn every day. Uh, but it's not something, in my opinion, you can just necessarily jump into and jump out of. And it's also a process that I think individual companies have to be committed to. It's your process, own the process. There are other entities that are involved, such as your bank, such as credit insurance brokers, such as local council in country. They're all very important. But in my opinion, you cannot outsource everything so that nothing touches your desk. You're gonna have to roll up your sleeves and, and get involved. And as, as I, I talked about, uh, uh, process. I, I could. I, I would be remiss if I, I failed to mention. Early on in the process, we had a couple of bankers who now retired, also, who were just marvelous to us as far as being patient, helping us, giving us uh, advice. So uh, these these different factors, different groups, bankers, credit insurance, uh, local council, they're all very very important. But again, it's it's your process. 
Also, from a, being your process, we found it to be a great source of repeat business. So we want to keep our customers in good standing with XM. We want to stay in good standing with XM. So it's a process that we don't, it's not a one and done. Once it's shipped, we're through with it. Uh, we're going to stay with it the whole way through from till the time it's paid off because we want that customer to come back and be able to go to XM and, and, and get things handled again and again and again. A couple of quick things as I'll close here and then let's turn it over to Phil. Uh, Jennifer mentioned the, foreign, the US content regs. Uh, in many cases, uh, other countries will have co-insurance, co-payment arrangements with XM so that uh, you can basically quote, quali qualify part of their content as US content. So I just throw that out so that you're, you're aware of it. And finally, as I would conclude by telling you again that I think XM is one of the most viable programs offering benefit not only to small business exporters, but all exporters and to the U.S. taxpayer. And I say that because XM has typically returned money to the U.S. Treasury. If you will, XM makes a profit. So not only are they providing a good service, they're also returning money to the U.S. Treasury. They are not a drain on the U.S. Treasury. It's, it's, it's a very unique agency that uh, serves a great purpose. Now, even though all of that's out there, there has been times that the uh, uh, XM has to be reauthorized by Congress every so often. And the XM employees cannot lobby, if you will, for reauthorization. This is a congressional uh, uh, mandate. However, there are organizations, and I will hold NSBA as being right at the front of the line, that have really worked hard over the years to make sure that this bank, XM Bank, is reauthorized. And so uh, not only would I ask you to look into XM, but look into NSBA. They're a great advocacy group, and they have uh, played a, a key role for XM and for small business exporters over many years. So I covered that quickly. I'll move back to Phil. I'll just say uh, from Phil and I's standpoint, if uh, Molly, I guess you will have our contacts for people later. And if they want to reach out to us, feel free to do so. So Phil Jeske, you're turn it over to you. Well, I think you can tell by David's, David's presentation that he's pretty passionate about this, as are we at Air Tractor after he's, since he's retired, we picked up the mantle and we're doing the same thing. I think David covered 90% of what we need to cover uh, the medium term insurance program is something that is, it's not extremely complex, but it's not simple either. Uh, as David said, you as the exporter have to own this process. No one else cares about exporting your product as much as you do. So the best thing that you can know up front is that you need to own the process. You need to know your customer. There are no your customer requirements. And this process has allowed us, I would say that probably 20 to 25% of our business is repeat customers that have been through the XM process once, which really helps us in the long term create a stable sales, a stable set of sales. Uh, he also touched briefly on the brokers. Locate a good broker to help you through this process. There are a ton of good brokers out there, but you need to find a broker that has experience in your specific XM product. Some brokers specialize in receivable financing, some specialize in medium term. So make sure when you find a broker, you find one that's familiar with your process. The medium term, the medium term program is different than a lot of the other programs and takes a little bit more work. So make sure when you're, when you're finding a broker, you find one that has experience in that area. David touched on the banks, same thing with the banks. Most banks do all the short term products, but there are, there are fewer banks who do the medium term. So try to find a bank that has experience in a medium term because it's a little bit different. The next thing I'm gonna say, you need to make sure that you, you're comfortable doing is getting some in-country counsel. It doesn't have to be an expert in the business, but in-country counsel will help you with a lot of the small things and the importation issues that you may or may not have thought about. Uh, David touched on the US content. A portion of what we export does not have US content. That should not be a deterrent to you because a lot of the other export credit agencies co-finance along with XM Bank to enable you to finance 85% of the export. Uh, 
Molly, I don't want to run over time, and I know we're going to be tight, so I'm going to cut it off there. And if anybody has questions when we get to the question periods, don't hesitate to ask questions or contact us outside of this if you're not able to get your question answered during the webinar. Thanks, so Will Molly. and David. I, I really appreciate that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to um, Todd McCracken, who's going to talk through um, some of these survey results. Um, this, this hasn't been made public yet, so you all are the very first people who are seeing it. Um, so with that, Todd, you can take it away. Thank you very much, Molly, and thanks to other presenters. We're really happy to have uh, uh, XM with us today because, as everyone has said, they do a, a tremendous amount for small business exporters that uh, I think is is greatly underutilized, as, as David said. Uh, so I, I just want to give you a, a, a sort of a sneak preview of this survey, just sort of some highlights. Uh, we do, a, a, periodically, we do a survey of, of uh, small business exporters and, and, the, and the attitudes of general small businesses who aren't exporting uh, to the export marketplace. I just kind of want to give you a very top line taste of that here because I think some of it informs uh, some of the things we try to advocate for uh, in Washington when it comes to helping out small exporters. Uh, a, a baseline, I'll sort of start off with, um, you know, who's exporting and 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 why not? Uh, we found that at least in this survey, that. Um, uh, uh, most of the respondents have never exported anything to any company or individual outside the United States. Um, now, I'd say this number actually is a little bit uh, even skewed a little bit. I think there are probably a higher share of exporters who take the export survey. That shouldn't be surprising than the small business community at large. So, I, so in, in actuality, there's even smaller share of the small business community that has exported uh, a, a product. But then we look at um, would they be interested in doing so? And you, there's a clear majority that say yes. And this gets at one of the central conundrums of, of, of export policy for small companies is that we have a mismatch between the companies that say they would be willing to export, want to export, are interested in exploring, exporting, and those that actually do it. So although I would say these numbers are improving uh, and, and and small companies are showing a little bit much more of a, a sort of an international focus. Uh, so then we ask people, if they're not exporting, why aren't they? What are the barriers? What gets in the way? Uh, and I, and I, I don't know if you can read this slide very uh, easily because it is a little bit small because there's a lot of answers here. But mostly it comes down to sort of lack of knowledge. Uh, and that's why we're so pleased we have such great participation here today because the, the stuff you're from XM is only one piece of the export uh, puzzle, but it really is uh, uh, comes down to um, educating small companies about what uh, what they need to do because the number one answer for why they're an export is they don't know what to do, they don't know where to start. Uh, so uh, I would really encourage everyone, there's a plethora of of excellent webinars like this one run by the Small Business Administration, XM Bank, uh, uh, Department of Commerce, and other private entities like NSBA. Uh, so uh, make sure you get engaged in those things and, and they'll give you a lot of those tools. Um, and the number two answer here is I don't have exportable goods. There's not much we can do about that, but some of that I think is perception. Uh, increasingly, uh, uh, there's a huge market in service exports uh, from, from domestic US companies to the world that uh, some folks may not realize what they have actually is, is, um, is sell uh, abroad. Uh, and then beyond that, it gets into the complexity and all the rest of that. Um, that uh, I think I'd like to move to the next slide to explain that a little bit, because we asked people, you know, who manages your export operations? And surprise, surprise, like so many things in a small business, 60% say the business owner does it him or herself. Uh, and that gets at why clearing away barriers, entering into free trade agreements, uh, deregulating the, the whole marketplace, especially in other countries is so important because the folks who are doing the management of the exports are juggling a million other things in their companies and, and they can't spend the time to, to figure out how to export to, to you know, several countries individually. So this is one of the reasons our association has always put uh, 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 entering into uh, free trade agreements and streamline exporting and importing for that matter uh, as a really high priority. Um, so uh, let's talk briefly about, I guess, exporting assistance. You know, those these folks, they say they do it themselves, but they've got to have help some places. Who helps them? Well, there's a number of independent uh, uh, entities that they find. More often than not, it's their freight forwarder. Uh, or a customs broker or other companies that, that, that help them with that. So uh, uh, if you're interested in exporting and, and uh, uh, th these are the kind of folks I think you should have on your list that you, you could reach out to for assistance in addition to, to trade associations like us. 
Um, then we ask folks what their challenges uh, uh, are. These are folks who are exporting. Um, and guess what? Number one is worried about getting paid. And so this is a clear example of a place that XM Bank um, can help. Uh, and uh, it is the number one challenge uh, uh, that, uh, that these exporters identify. And that's another reason we're really pleased to, uh, uh, to be partnering with them, with them today. Um, and then finally, uh, let's talk about exporting uh, payments. And this drills down to this a little bit more. Um, you know, how significant a concern is it to receive payments from a foreign customer? Um, I mean, a pretty high share, almost 30% are very concerned about it. Um, and uh, a more significant share are somewhat concerned. So almost three quarters say this is a, a, a concern of theirs. Um, but interestingly, when you look at people, whether folks have had issues collecting payments from overseas companies, most have not. Two thirds say no, that that's not in actuality been an issue. But still, the third that say yes, it has is a significant issue. And again, this is uh, another place where some of the, the offerings from export and, and of the XM Bank and others can 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 really help and provide that backstop and reassurance for small companies looking to export. So uh, that's a very quick run through. There's going to be I, I encourage you all when we release the full thing to come full uh, survey to come back and look at it because there's, it's 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 an extensive survey that looks at all, all aspects of of small business exporting, uh, and I think it's going to get get a lot of attention nationally. So that's a very brief run through. Uh, thank you, Molly, and thank you all for being here. And uh, I think we need to leave a little bit of time for Q and A. Great, thanks, Todd, and and Jennifer, David, and Phil. Thanks so much for your input. I think this has been really useful information. Uh, I do know that we've had several questions put into the chat, and Jennifer has been uh, fiercely responding to a lot of those. I do have a couple she hasn't gotten to just yet. So, um, first question is uh, for Jennifer: How long does it take to receive a quote on an XM export credit insurance policy? That's a good question. Thanks, Molly. Uh, so there are, like we mentioned, there are several different programs. The export credit insurance policy is, is actually really quick, especially if XM already knows the foreign customer, because like we said, we're doing the due diligence on the foreign account that you plan to sell to. If, if XM already has experience through another U.S. exporter, that could be quite quick. Literally, I've seen it in the same day. I don't want to promise same day, uh, but it can be a few days for uh, XM underwriting to approve uh, a, a new in XM export insurance account, credit insurance account. Uh, working capital is is at the pace of a lender because it, it again involves a commercial lender who's who's approving it. And then um, and I know um, Air Tractor was talking about medium term taking a, a little bit longer because the due diligence is um, is a little bit more hefty there. So those those could take um, a month or month to two months realistically. Um, so export short term credit insurance is, is a week or less typically. Thank you. That's great. Um, I do have another question, and it is, what is the role of the broker dealer in the relationship? So uh, at, on the export insurance side, so this short term insurance we're talking about and protecting your invoices, XM does work through registered uh, brokers of XM. So it's like, you know, State Farm has State Farm agents. Um, XM has private uh, insurance agents that, that work with XM coverage and the private sector coverage that's out there in the market. Um, and the exporter, it's it's it's. it's it's a good idea to do that because the exporter um, would have access to other programs apart from XM if that's a better fit um, at, or if they grow into a private sector program. But the role is for the uh, XM registered broker to help you with the application, make sure you're applying for the best insurance option that, that's best for you. And then as you have claims or you need to add international customers or report sales to XM that are occurring, the broker is there to help you with all of the administrative functions of the insurance. Right. Um, one question, and this is, I've gotten a couple of these questions, but I, I think they, um, they're they similar. Uh, and it is, does XM work with US commercial service or other federal agencies to assist in, in getting foreign customers? Mm -hmm. Yes, that was uh, one of the slides that'll be in the slide deck that you get, the US commercial service. The contact information wasn't there, but you, you can go to their website at, at um, trade.gov or export.gov. I'm not sure which website they're using right now. Sorry, forgive me. Um, I think it's trade.gov. Anyway, um, to do a contact um, us, they have, I have an office in all um, of the state, US states. Um, they have a very large presence. Um, so yeah, we, we work with them 
um, in a collective way of they they do the market intelligence, they do the fact the finding of foreign buyers, and then we step in once you have the transaction negotiated and you're ready to start the shipping. Um, so we, we do work hand in hand in that regard, but they do the business development side of things. Great. Um, I, I've seen a couple uh, uh, requests for information. And so what I want to do first before we, I know we're getting real close to where we need to end. I have a poll and this is the question, are you interested in having someone from XM contact you to follow up? So I'm going to launch this, simply hit yes or no, and then we'll know if you want somebody to contact you. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and that's being launched right now. And um, while we're doing that, um, I'll try and turn back to one more. Let's do one last question, Jennifer, and then we will uh, go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, how does XM increase my existing line of credit? Um, the existing line of credit, yeah. So we, we were talking about private uh, commercial lenders, banks and non-banks, um, how they they really, they might have set, uh, a, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars towards your line of credit now, but by having collateral on your exports, they're they're often willing to increase your line of credit because now you know further than just you know maybe your personal guarantee or your other assets that you have back in your line of credit. You now have the U.S. government guarantee on your exports, so a lot of times they're willing to advance you more money on your exports instead of say fifty percent. Maybe they'll give you ninety percent advance on your on your export transactions. So it could increase in, in your line of credit just by having that collateral, that export insurance. On your on your invoicing that you're doing overseas good question right uh again i know we're a little bit over time um uh, phil david todd jennifer any final comments before we close the webinar i think i heard air tractor mention i, I would say the same thing like it, if it, hopefully this doesn't seem intimidating at all but even if you're a rural company a company of any size please reach out to us because there's probably a fit for something that we're doing, that we're offering or something that some of our federal partners are offering. We're, we're very active in um, making sure companies are in touch with as many people as they can to help their export business. So please, please. You know, the only other thing I would add, Molly, is that uh, sometimes when people push back against uh, XM, they don't understand it. They think you're exporting jobs. You're not. You're exporting products and creating jobs with the help of XM. It is, it is fabulous. So Again, I just hold this uh, organization up to everybody that's interested, reach out to them. I just want to thank XM for the, for the, for, for the partnership and being here. And I want to specifically thank uh, uh, Jennifer, David and Phil for taking the time to, to share their, their insights and expertise. And thank you all for being here today. Great. We really appreciate everyone's time today. Um, we had some great speakers, some great questions come in. We really appreciate it. Um, several requests for contact information slides. We will get all of that to you uh, later today. So keep an eye out for that email and also keep an eye out for um, our survey when it's, uh, when it's publicly launched. So thank everyone for your time today and have a great rest of your afternoon. Bye.